Wenatchee is gorgeous in the spring with its lush green rolling hills, abundant wildflowers everywhere, and the views of the Columbia River. The local food scene offers an abundant selection of authentic international cuisines featuring the unique farm fresh ingredients of the region. Wenatchee is also home to award-winning wines, handcrafted hard ciders, and a talented handful of local brewers producing fine craft beers. Visit Wenatchee, the heart of Washington State. $20 million, $19 million, $6 million. These are all awards recovered for clients of Phillips Law Firm. To win big, you have to fight big. And Phillips Law has been fighting the too-big-to-fail insurance industry for decades. Not every case will have a multi-million dollar outcome, but Phillips Law will fight just as hard to recover the outcome you deserve. If you or a loved one has been injured in a car accident or on the job, call or click today at 1-800-JUSTICE or visit justiceforyou.com. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your home is going into foreclosure, and you feel like a financial wreck. You don't know where to turn for accurate information. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné. Let's talk about some legal options. If we work quickly, we can propose a plan to save your home, modify the loan, or in many cases, even eliminate your second mortgage. The consultation is free. I've helped hundreds of people just like you make informed decisions about whether to save their home or exit it on a reasonable, organized timeline. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. Got that 50th anniversary gear, and you can get it. Celebrate the big 5-0 with us. Lots of great gear out there, and very limited edition, too, because once it's gone, it is out. If you want a hoodie, get it now. A beanie, get it now. Trucker cap, you betcha, get it now. I think now is when we're supposed to get it. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I think you're right about that. Uh, Lots of cool stuff on there, and it looks good, too, with that gold rock logo celebrating the Big 50. Yep, celebrate with us, man. Get your KISW 50th anniversary merch today at KISW.com. Let's play B. So let's turn down for tequila. Charge out for what? Oh, yeah, little tequila. Tequila! Nice. Yeah, get that tequila. If you want okay. to. Or right. if you don't yeah. want to, you don't have to. I'm not here to uh, tell you what to do. Well, I threw up a little video earlier today because I I, I miss tacos, you know, on that oh, uh, nice. on great day of Tuesday. So I, I asked people, what do you think? Two, Tuesdays for tacos, Tuesday for tequila. I mean, you can do both if you want us. I, I think you should do both and have a really good Tuesday. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Let's get to our contestant. We got Travis in Kent. Travis, are you there? I am. Excellent. All right, Steve, get out of here. Goodbye. Yeah. For those playing at home, Travis will have 60 seconds to answer 10 questions. Travis, you can pass all you want, but you will only get three guesses per question. Are you ready? I am. What European city provides the setting for the Phantom of the Opera? Yes. How many zeros are there in a trillion? Uh, Eight. No. Nine. No. Ten. No, Harry Truman was the first president to pardon which animal? Dog. No. Cat. No. Cow. No. In what country did rugby originate? Australia. No. England. Yes. Who played the leading female part in 2018's A Star Is Born? Pat. The uh, the name for which semi precious stone comes from the Latin for seawater? Lady Gaga for the last one. Yes. Uh, what's the question on this one? The name for which semi-precious stone comes from the Latin for seawater? Pearl. No. Uh, pass. What South American country hosted the 2016 Summer Olympics? <sighs> Travis? What was the question? <laughs> what South American country hosted the 2016 Summer Olympics? Uh, I don't know. 
All right, then. <laughs> One, two, three, correct. <laughs> well, well, you'll have that. Yep, yep. Yeah, they can't all be uh, big high-scoring games. Oh, is that what you think? This? Okay. I, I, I did not state an untrue uh, statement there. You did not state an untrue statement. Yeah. You did not. Words are hard. As, as far as you know. <laughs> Steve, are you ready? Oh, yeah! What European city provides the setting for the Phantom of the Opera? Uh, Paris. Yes. Oh, How many zeros are there in a trillion? Twelve? Uh, yes. Harry, nice. Harry Truman you. was the first president to pardon which animal? A, a goat? No. A sheep? No. A goat. A horse? No. Dog? Uh, no. In what country did rugby originate? Um, England. Yes. Who played the leading female part in 2018's A Star is Born? Oh, uh... Tracy Lords. No. Jenna Jameson. Wow. No. Lady no. Gaga. Yes. Yes. <laughs> the name yes, for which yes. semi precious stone comes from the Latin for seawater? Silver? No. Diamond? No. Pearl? No. Pearl. What South American necklace? No. What South American country hosted the 2016 Summer Olympics? Spain? No. Mexico? No. <laughs> South America? <laughs> no. Which coach on The Voice has been a part of it for all 20 seasons? Blake Shelton. Yeah! One, two, three, four, five. You win five to three. Boom. Boom. Oh, well. What are you going to do? <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, sorry, Travis. Yep. Sorry, dude. And he's gone. Well, uh, in, uh, in honor of this text, Migs, my boy, when you inevitably dominate this beat, Migs, how about the glorious victory song? See you on March 26th oh, wow. for the wrestling edition from Ben in Sherline. Oh, yeah. March 26th. Yeah. Nice. Glorious, baby. That's a, such a good entrance song. It is. <laughs> it's one of my favorites. I thought this was an easy question. Danny, uh, judging by his reaction, maybe thought it was an easy question. Harry Truman was the first president to pardon which animal? A turkey. It's a turkey. The only oh, one that presidents no, pardoned. No, you're yeah. absolutely right. Because I heard you like making a sound in the background. I'm like, what does this know at all? Because well, no. well, I'm like, <laughs> why would he pardon a dog? We don't. <laughs> well, dogs. some dogs need to be pardoned, okay? <laughs> I mean, actually, I mean, uh, Joe Biden's dog's got to be pardoned because it yeah. was it went Dude, over, right. Right. Yeah. President Biden's dog might be in trouble. Yeah, they had to ship yeah. him back home. So why yeah. did he have to pardon the turkey, though? Um, What's the backstory behind this? I think just for Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah they, let, they let one turkey live because everybody eats turkey, but he pardons one. Yeah. And then that way, that turkey gets to uh, live free and until not... next year or until next week. I think maybe yeah. it's pardoned for life. Pardoned for life. Yeah, yeah. I think it gets to go to a turkey. I'm making all of this up. All right. But uh, you, sure are. <laughs> you surely are. <laughs> turkey heaven. Yeah. No, that's yeah. when. Well, mm. the turkey heaven is where you hope where they go when they're not pardoned. What yeah. if there's a place called turkey heaven? It's, you know, there's places that say heaven in the name of it. It's true. Are you, are you guys are basically doing a bunch of make em ups. None of you really know, right? No. <laughs> okay, good job. Well, this means <laughs> reading Wikipedia. Yeah, but we don't know if that's true or not. Yeah, right? Someone could have edited it. We don't know what's going on. Okay. Yeah, Fine. it's looking like, you know, turkeys are were donated to the president <laughs> as gifts from private citizens. That's kind of where it all started back in, like, you know, 1800s, like 19... Yeah, 1873, uh, and so I think they just kind of... Oh, it's like, I don't to, want these turkeys, okay. and we're not going to cook them, so <laughs> let's pardon them and give them... To, that's re-gifting. That's just literally... Okay, it's literally good. re-gifting. So that's a, a sort of like a semi-paraphrased, half-assed Wikipedia reason. I still don't mm-hmm. know if any of it's true. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. Uh, Turkey <laughs> heaven. What's the name of this semi-precious stone that comes from the Latin for sea water? I was going to guess coral. No, uh, no. Uh, uh, Aquamarine? There you go. Aquamarine. Mm. Aquamarine? Aquamarine Aqua. is a- Wait a yeah. minute, that's, that's, a, that, that's the name of a gem? Yeah. yeah. I don't think I realized that. I it's, always thought that was just a color. No, yeah, no, it's, 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 it's a gem that looks but, like that color. Like an emerald, like a ruby, and an aquamarine. Yeah. Oh, wow, I had no idea that they made gems that, with that name. Well, they, oh. they don't really make them. I mean, I don't know how gems are made, but... I don't know. Well, they're kind of rocks, man. Yeah, yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> I, yeah, again, let's go check Wikipedia. <laughs> yeah, let me make something up real quick. Uh, the South American country that hosted the 2016 Summer Olympics. Is that Seoul? No, that's oh, in South, South Korea. Oh, South America. I said South America. South America. Oh, on, country? Oh. <laughs> yes, the country. Brazil. Yes, it's Brazil. Brazil. Yes, Brazil. It's Good job, Vic. You know, the biggest country down there. Uh, congratulations, Steve. You won. Thank you. Steve, good for you. You're a winner. I appreciate you. Appreciate everybody. Yeah. It was a yeah. tough win. It's a tough Without win. Without you guys, I wouldn't have been able to do it.
But I got to give all glory to the man upstairs. <laughs> Jeff in accounting. Wow. I, I, I got news for you. You know what? You need to ask the man upstairs to give you better things, okay? <laughs> you know what I'm just saying? You know, he, he he's probably like, what, Steve just wants to win beat Migs? That's easy. <laughs> Let's you know what I mean. Some people go world peace, maybe some disease ending. From Jeff in accounting out? upstairs? I can't yeah. get all that. Come on, oh. man. Oh, it's Jeff in accounting who you're thinking. Oh, I yeah. see. All glory to Jeff in accounting. Mm-hmm. Uh, a new study found the top things that women have in their purse, and basically, if they talk to Vicky, the answer would be everything. Okay, yeah. So they have the things. Let's let's see if Vicky has them. Oh, oh, Vicky has everything in her purse. Well, I know I mean, she's got pretty much everything. What is it? It's like Mary Poppins. Does she have the bag that just had everything? That everything just kept being in her yeah, bag. Yeah. Is that her? Yeah, yeah, she's got the big giant bag. Yeah, and Vicky, you got the Mary Poppins bag. It's just like the, you know, it's like, oh yeah, whatever you need, it's in here. It's a little embarrassing because uh, I haven't cleaned it out in a few days. So enjoy. Oh, all right. So let's see. Does Vicky uh, have these things in her bag? A giraffe. Is it? Does Vicky have a giraffe in her bag? <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez, man, she just pulled a giraffe out. There it it's is, a baby giraffe. And, yeah. But it's still a giraffe. Yeah. So here are the top five things that women have in their purse. Okay. Your phone. Well, I'm at work, so... But that's, tech, most, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Technically, sure, yeah. Okay. okay. I got it. I feel like, I, yeah, a purse, it's a... How about, uh, to me, I don't think it's as lame to have these in your purse, though. How about keys? Yep. Somewhere. Okay, so... Oh, I should get those in there. So, you're going to need... Yep. Get, Found a... Get, oh, my gosh. Go. How many keys do you have on this keychain? A lot. Do you have to plug that into your car, or is it a key fob thing? No, I do have to plug it into my car. I got my house. I saw my parents' old house key... I have oh two boy. house keys because I have one for the back door. Don't they say that's bad for I the mean, car? They're going to ruin the ignition. Yeah, it's yeah. going to mess up the ignition mm-hmm. because, I mean, it, that's like a pound of stuff you have. Do you have a well, bullet? Like, I used to have a, <laughs> no, this is for medication. I have a little, because I'm an old lady. I keep my, my, my pills in here. Oh. You keep your pills on a, in a bullet that's on yeah, your kitchen? Yeah, it's meant for, for medication. Oh, okay. I got my chapstick. I got uh, a bottle opener. Is your chapstick on a keychain? And is that a flannel yeah. warmer? Yeah, it's like what? to hold it. It won't fall out. Yeah, it's pretty okay. cool. All the kids are using it these days. You, gotta, you have a and bottle I got opener. A bottle okay. opener, and then I got she's a got screwdriver s- and a flathead. She's got a flathead. Screwdriver. Right. She's got both kinds of screws. But since you have a purse, why wouldn't you leave a lot of that stuff on like separate keychains? That way, you don't have to have the whole keychain dangling. Well, I used, I used to have a lanyard that would disconnect and yes. had all the like extra stuff on there, but I lost the lanyard. No, Aww. maybe it's in your purse. Actually, probably. <laughs> there's <laughs> only a place to buy more of those kind of things. But yeah, yeah, yeah that's crazy. Talk, I'm trying. Yeah. I know the second I buy it, I'm gonna find it. So how many okay. keys are on your keychain? Uh, one, keys. two, three, okay. four. Oh my. Five. Okay. Actually, I need to put the other key in there. Five. It I've, sounds I've like a six she's... one. I got a PO box now. If I, it sounds like you got a hotel keychain, like the old school hotel. <laughs> yeah, here's my Why do you have a PO box? Because I got an OnlyFans. Oh, so people can send you stuff. Yep. yep. Oh my gosh. I do fan letters. Okay, this is this is really. How about a face mask? Do you have a face mask in your purse? Uh, yep, right here. Yeah, okay, okay, there you and go. And bills. Wow. How about your wallet and credit cards? That's yep. number four on the list. Yep. Got it. So far, and... she's got them all. And an average of two bottles of hand sanitizer. One sec. <laughs> deodorant. She got deodorant. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Lip yeah. balm is on this list as well, and Vicky has that. Yep. She has that on her keychain, BJ. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not that. Imagine you have pens, right, Vicky? Do you have any pens and <laughs> tissues in there? Oh my. She has like four little zip up purses inside of her purse. Pens. Oh, she's, uh, yeah, she's. Two sets of glasses. Yeah. Two sets of glasses? Anti fog. For my glasses. Anti fog. Oh my God. Tie Jesus. pen, more pens. Fruit stack. Wow. Oh yeah. A fruit, a fruit stack. stack. A fruit file. Stack. <laughs> Nail file. A phone, phone charger. charger. Oh my God. This is insane. Still no hand sanitizer. I do though. have it in a bag. Do you have any pizza in there? Because I'm kind of hungry. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You got any cookies or anything? Boy, Vicky, you are more really... Chapstick. She's looking like the mad scientist is really what it is. Oh, there's my nail clippers. Oh, she's... Oh. <laughs> I'm watching like a, a real-life hoarder right next to me. Oh, dude. I don't even want... The second you guys need something, I got it. You have an energy drink in your... Yeah. Why? Because I need it. And some mushed-up I... granola yeah. that's like just basically crumbs now. Yeah. I mean, oh, she needs it. Hungry. This is insane. Okay, I think I left my hand sanitizer in my car. Oh, you know, I have one. <laughs> all right, there we go. She wins. Uh, she got them all. She's got them all, BJ. Wow. See, and I got an roller. Uh, and, I got okay, mace. We're, we're, we're good. Okay. Man, how do you, I don't know how you're going to defend yourself to, to get to the mace with all that other stuff in there. You might I, just hit him with the keys. I have to put him away because I'm afraid I'm going to mace myself. 
Anybody else have that fear? Yeah, no. I've been there. Oh, okay. that. Now, a lot of people are saying, yeah, Vicky, you might, you're going to ruin your ignition with all those uh, that, that weight on I your need, keys. I need to find my lanyard. Uh, yeah. Oh, she I got band aid. She got, got a first aid I, kit. I have my own first aid kit I made. Okay. Like then. literally everything I got. Uh, what do you need? This is like uh, the scene from the b- Breakfast Club where she just like dumps out her purse and they're like, oh, we didn't ask for this. Dude, yeah. Yeah. someone just texted says she's the chick from the Breakfast Club. Yeah. yeah. I got little sunscreen packets. I got band aids. I we got really some Bee Jolly lotion in case I'm, I'm sore. Shout out to Brett from Bee Jolly. Hell yeah. yeah. We never really asked. Allergy for any. medication. I don't think we're good. No, I think you we're don't good. Need it? Thank you. Do you have a defibrillator? <laughs> Yeah. I got an inhaler. Close enough, right? I give up. (laughs) This is crazy. I know, dude. She's, I mean, it is, but it is, it is wild when we go on trips with her. It's just like, you just know you can ask Vicky and she's got it. It, uh, You don't have to bring anything. If we go to conventions, it's just like, Vicky's here. We don't need to bring anything. I don't even bring clothes. I don't bring suitcases. I don't bring anything. It's like I got BJ's little pack of underwear and shirt, like just in case he needs a change of clothes. Yeah, exactly. Hey, Vicky, you got a shirt in there? Oh, thanks. Are your feet stinky? I got shoe odor spray. You got what kind of spray? Shoe odor. Oh, yeah, I thought you have poopery oh, for the rat? I used to, but I think I gave it to somebody. You probably gave it to the rat. Yeah, 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 that's, yeah. that's something you don't give back. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, want you back. really don't want that back. Q tips. Yes, I got Q tips because Rev asked once, and uh, I was like, oh, yeah, I should probably keep these in my bag. Oh, we should see you need. that. All you got to do is ask once. So let's ask for like no name cakes, pizza, things like that. She'll put them in there. <laughs> right? You joke, but I will. Sour Patch Kids. You got any Sour Patch Kids? <laughs> I already gave them to you. <laughs> oh. All right. Amazing. Well, I want my no name cake, Vicky. Make sure you stock up on that. I do got the like a layered fruit bar. That's oh, sweet. Okay. Somebody want to know if your purse is actually bigger than you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and yeah. I actually, I got a smaller bag on purpose. Because this is, is my small bag. Oh, and when she walks around with a backpack, which is just as big as she is, it really is like watching a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. Yeah, this is actually a children's bag I got at Walmart. See, I would hate then going to like any kind of event with you because they're like, okay, we got to go through your bag. It would take them an hour to go through your bag. So funny enough, I have found a way to condense this all. I wear the jackets that have pockets on the inside. So I just shove everything in the pockets and then just take right. off the whole jacket and be like, here you go. Have fun. <laughs> That's not, uh, yeah. Hey, guess what time it is? It is time for Listeners on the Loose. As opposed to Hoarders on the Loose. Uh, you pick the topic, you guide the show. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. What do you want to talk about? We got your calls. We got your texts at 917 on The Rock. BJ and Migs. Mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. And yeah, it is listeners on the loose. This is where you get to pick the topic. You get to guide the show at 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. Yep, the floor is open. You get to say what you want to say, but Steve does have this rule. It's a simple rule, BJ. That's to show some energy and bring it. Otherwise, we're going to have to gong you. And then say goodbye. Goodbye, old friend. 206 421 Rock, Texas at 77999. Let's go to Juan in Tacoma. Juan, you are on the Rock. Hello, fellas. How you doing? Not too bad, Juan. Welcome to the show. What you got for us, buddy? Uh, I started uh, with this pandemic last year. Um, I, I picked up the guitar. Oh, nice. I started les- yeah, I started lessons on guitar. A lot of people were doing all sorts of hobbies, and uh, guitar didn't make the top ten, but it was at least in the you know the top things that people were doing. And yeah. uh, that's something that Danny uh, says he couldn't teach Steve how to do, but Steve would like to do. How's it been going so far? It's pretty good. I, um, the man, um, the man, uh, I found him on Facebook Marketplace. Actually, everything I bought, the, the guitar, the amp, the case was free. He <laughs> said I have a $300 setup. And I only paid sixty bucks for it. What was the marketplace? What was the first song that you tried to learn on the guitar? Uh, no, no, he's he's teaching me the bass uh, from from start from, from from the beginning. He's teaching me the chords. He's teaching me the, all that. So, do you know how to play anything right now? No, sir. <laughs> oh. I'm still learning. I'm I'm learning, but yeah, but you can I, figure something out. Like I learned Stray Cat Strut, and I don't know how to play a guitar, but I was able to put my fingers nice. in the right spot or or come as yeah. you are by Nirvana. You know, you, there's a, there's stuff that you can kind of just have some fun with while you're still learning. Yeah, oh, well, I don't know. I haven't really looked into it, but yeah, I just keep practicing what he teaches me. 
Nice. All right. Well, Juan, if you ever feel like you feel comfortable giving us a bit of a riff, call back in and uh, we'd be happy to hear what you've learned, even if it's uh, chopsticks, whatever the, the guitar version Chops, of chopsticks Chops. is. I feel like it. smoke on the water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was the first. <laughs> that was the first thing I thought because the old episode of Two and a Half Men, when the kid, that's all he knew how to play, so he was playing it the whole episode, and people, he was just driving everybody nuts. What was the first song you learned to play on drums, Steve? Oh, man. Do you remember? It might have been Van Halen's Jump. Nice. Ooh. Oh, no, nah, yeah. Good. That or Kiss a Strutter. Okay. It was just, just a simple, basic drum. I mean, drums are a little bit different than guitar. For sure, you know, for sure. But like, those were the ones I remember playing along to when I was first starting to play the drums, and I thought that was pretty cool. But yeah, I remember like doing straight catch strutting on the guitar, and I thought that was my buddy taught me how to do the bass line to Three Days by Jane's Addiction, which is like a great bass oh, line. Nice. Oh, nice! Yeah. And I was like, man, I'm going to impress the ladies. I had a bass guitar in my college <laughs> dorm, but then I realized. A, I had to find someone that, a girl that would even be willing to come back to my dorm. Yeah. <laughs> and then she had to also be an, a, a, there's a lot of factors. Like, I found a girl to come back to the dorm and like, hey, check this out. And I would play and she was like, I don't know what that is. Like, so, oh. So it was like trying to find a Jane's Addiction fan that also was interested in me to come back to my dorm was an impossible task. Yeah. It was a stupid thing to learn. That's yeah, very, very yeah. specific as you're just running around. <laughs> so, first off, uh, <laughs> and I didn't play it well. It wasn't like as if I was like nailing it. It was like really like, do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. I kind of like all stuttered and all messed up. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Explains a lot, my friend. <laughs> no, I gonna say anything. Well, I tried at first, hey, you want to come back and see my bongos, but they thought I was like some weird euphemism. I actually had bongos in my dorm room. Oh, bad. man, that is so hippie. <laughs> that is like so Animal House, like where John Belushi would have just kicked his foot through those. Really? I would jam out the like Dave Matthews band and, and Rusted Root. That was wow. like a big hippie jam band for us when we were in college. And I was just like, sometimes I'd just be feeling it and just be like banging the bongos <laughs> in my dorm room. Oh my gosh! Getting stoned. Yeah, okay, that's, that's about yeah, right. Of course, and we had like, the yeah, big mean, ass, yeah. like the big ass, like towel that would put in the door, and the fan blowing out the window, the tube that was filled with uh, laundry detergent, uh, the dryer sheets. Nice yeah. to blow that through. Like we had the full on setup. Yeah, college was awesome. <laughs> Sounds like it. Yeah, it really was. And the best part was I was the RA, so I don't even know who I was trying to hide from. Right? Like the person I should be hiding from is me. <laughs> Oh, look at well, you! You try to set a good example. That's, oh, you know, you, that's what did it you is. ever catch yourself? No, man. Yeah, I was always like it works. You're right. And did you ever bust anyone else for doing it? Yeah, but I would tell them to share. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you're such a corrupt cop. The best what? RA ever. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. Like you guys smoking pot and like, uh, I'm like, why are you guys so stupid? Come on, there's ways to do this that we don't know because there's other RAs on other floors. And I was like, I ain't going to say anything. How about I could join it? <laughs> <laughs> there they we never go. Never said no. Oh. It wasn't like I was like confiscating their weed. I just wanted a puff. You see, it does. It starts at a young age. Corruption, graft, you know, bribery. It all starts at oh, a young age. Yeah, I would be a terrible person. That is in charge of like rules and stuff. <laughs> And stuff. Rules and stuff. And stuff. Uh, the rules, I don't know. I wouldn't put you in charge of the rules. Maybe the stuff. We'll see. Right. 206 421 Rock, Texas at 77999. It's listeners on the loose. You pick the topic, you guide the show. Oh, someone just texted and said, Steve, we had the MIGs last night at the Wicked Pie in Puyallup. Amazing oh. pie, awesome drinks, and yes, BJ, caramelized onions. Mm. They, I, th mm. I thought that they had to be in my mind because it just yep. w went so well with all the other ingredients you have on that barbecuish style pizza. Oh, dude, my, my in laws went during the afternoon and went and we could pie pizzas in Puyallup, and they were so kind because we've said nice things about them, and I've always said how I love their pizza, so they just Decided to honor me by making a pizza named after me with what I want. Proceeds nice. go to Motley Zoo, uh, you know, that does great stuff with, uh, with Animal Rescue as well. Uh, but I saw the pizza. I'm like, you know what? I got to get it for dinner. And so we ordered it for dinner. It's actually called the Migs with one G, which I thought was kind of funny. <laughs> oh, that's that a, is a great funny. name to the pizza. So it, it was, dude, it's so good. The cilantro, which was the part that I was like kind of curious. They're like, hey, we want to throw fresh cilantro on this. I'm like, all right. I'm not going to say no. You guys know pizza. Man, that's such a great add on to the pizza. Oh, yeah. It, it adds cilantro. so much flavor to it. Cilantro's good on the right situation. The pineapple yeah. was great, Danny. Yeah, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take one without the pineapple. You sent us the picture last night, and I will say it looked delicious, but I was just like, I'll just, 
no pineapple on mine. And then my, my wife got a vegan one. Like, you know, you could, you could create your own pizza. So we did one that was more vegan style. So, and then, and Tatum, you know, was doing the vegan thing with, with Sid until she can make her own decisions in life. And then I'm giving her chicken. Nice. <laughs> until she can make her own decisions in life. Yeah. I'm giving her chicken. That's right. <laughs> yeah. But uh, she had there's a picture on my Instagram and she's just got a full slice in her hand and she's gnawing at it. It's awesome. Oh, she likes that's bread. Cool. We've realized either she likes pizza or she just really loves bread. Yeah, yeah those are great things. Well, bread is yeah. great. Mm-hmm. Bread is awesome. Everybody knows how awesome bread is. So, yeah. And then you throw sauce on there. Oh, and cheese. And bread became even more awesome and more great. Truth. Uh, someone said, hey, let BJ know that the Crumble Cookie has a Lucky Charm cookie this week along with a key lime pie and both were tasty from Paul and Puyallup, the father of a cookie slinger. Ooh, I wonder. Look, I knew the key lime pie would be delicious, but I was wondering about the Lucky Charm cookie. Glad to hear good reviews. They also have one that's just going to be, I just saw this on their Instagram. They have a cookie that's only going to be available on St. Patrick's Day. So what is that, tomorrow? Yep. Yep. Uh, it's and a it's rainbow not, it's, sugar cookie. And I was going to say, I thought it would be the Lucky Charm. So they, they had another one. Yep. Just for tomorrow and tomorrow only. A rainbow sugar cookie, which I guess the rainbow's... Go- oh, because the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow for the for oh, the, yeah, for the leprechaun. Mm-hmm. Ah, that makes sense. Ah. And I got good news. And the sugar news. cookie's golden. Nice. Good oh. news for Marysville people. Crumble cookie is open up in Marysville on the 24th. So I got to ah. cut, like, next week? Yeah, yeah. next week. Next Wednesday. Yes, I'm so uh, excited. Sh- shit up. <laughs> 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 <Okay>. <laughs> Ah, uh, well. I and I hear good still- news you're bringing cookies in tomorrow. Like, yeah, well, baby. Yeah, right. If you guys are nice, I'd bring some in when they open. Okay. You know. you what if we're tonight? not nice? Thank you. When, what will you do if we're not nice? Well, I need you to know get the options. Nothing, sir. All right. Good well, day. There you go. That's what I'm getting right now, so I'm, I'll, I'll wait till the day of, <laughs> and I'll be nice. <laughs> 206 421 Rock, text us at 77999. It's listeners on the loose. Uh, someone just texted and saying, Hey, did you guys see what OJ Simpson has to say about Russell Wilson? I did not even know we Sorry. needed to hear from OJ Simpson about Russell Wilson. I mean, he always has a killer analysis, so I would imagine oh, he has some. Hey-o. Sorry. Sorry. Right there. All right. Apparently, All right. he went on his Twitter, and he was talking about a bunch of stuff, but one of the things he brought up was also his opinion on Russell Wilson. and Wait, whether- for- we and we forget he was a really good football player. I mean, I, I as much as we hate the guy, Russell. I, mean, he, Russell, I still like Russell, and he's still yeah, a good football he's a player. Nice guy. Yeah, we forget that. I mean, I mean, I guess it's like why? Like, why would I want to hear OJ's opinions? Oh yeah, I forgot he actually was a, a really good football player. <laughs> I guess we should. So what? Did, what? What did he say? Here, check it out. This start on this whole Russell Wilson thing. Uh, look, Seattle. Russell is associated with Seattle, and I know in his heart he don't want to leave Seattle. If he does leave, it would be to an American League team. I don't see them trading him to a National League team, so that means the Raiders would be in play. That's good. I live in Vegas. But come on, guys. You haven't learned anything from from Indianapolis? Look, Indy wouldn't get Andrew Luck an offensive line. For years, they didn't draft him a go-get offensive lineman, and you saw what happened to Andrew Luck, and he's one year younger than Russell Wilson, and he's out of the game. So come on, Seattle. Get the man some offensive lineman. I'm just saying. Take care. Again, you, I just mean, saying. I want to hate the guy, but I mean, he did play the game, and he's making points that I agree with. Well, I know there's a funny meme of Russell. It must have been either from like the Super Bowl or somewhere. He's all tearing up and he's crying. And they just said Russell Wilson on the first day of free agency going on. And all the big name offensive linemen have already been picked up by other teams. And I was like, yeah, probably kind of feels that way. Although I guess right now they're talking, uh, there's rumors that Seahawks are making a pitch for the uh, running back uh, Leonard Fournette. The guy that was on Tampa Bay, won the Super Bowl. Didn't do much during the regular season, but stepped up in the playoffs. Uh, Apparently he's like the big guy that uh, the Seahawks might be going after. Look, I don't mind that. You know, no. we need we need somebody. We just we lost two running backs that we had last season, so here we go again. You well, know, where it's it's this running back roulette with the Seahawks. Lost one for sure uh, with Hyde, but uh, I mean Chris Carson. Everyone's uh, thinking that he's. Oh, I thought be, he already signed. I don't he think did. Chris Carson has signed with anyone. Oh, just I could have sworn I heard he signed with somebody else. Okay, well that's good news. Hyde did, but as far as Chris Carson, yeah, but they're not going to want to pay what he wants. Oh, uh, okay, all right. Well, I'm glad you cleared that up, Steve. I just uh, I don't know where I put in my brain that he was already gone. Um, all right, it is listeners on the loose. You pick the topic. You guide the show. 206-421-ROCK. You can also text us at 77999. We got more of your calls, more of your texts at 934 on The Rock. BJ and Migs. Mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW.
Wenatchee is gorgeous in the spring with its lush green rolling hills, abundant wildflowers everywhere, and the views of the Columbia River. The local food scene offers an abundant selection of authentic international cuisines featuring the unique farm fresh ingredients of the region. Wenatchee is also home to award-winning wines, handcrafted hard ciders, and a talented handful of local brewers producing fine craft beers. Visit Wenatchee, the heart of Washington State. $20 million, $19 million, $6 million. These are all awards recovered for clients of Phillips Law Firm. To win big, you have to fight big. And Phillips Law has been fighting the too-big-to-fail insurance industry for decades. Not every case will have a multi-million dollar outcome, but Phillips Law will fight just as hard to recover the outcome you deserve. If you or a loved one has been injured in a car accident or on the job, call or click today at 1-800-JUSTICE or visit justiceforyou.com. New on Curiosity Stream. With superior armies come superior weapons. How has innovation mechanized the battlefield? From bullets to battleships and everything in between, it's machinery of warfare. Plus, from the gross Ew. to the gourmet, mm. see how that in flight meal lands on your tray table. On secrets of your airline food, it's all on Curiosity Stream. Annual plans are $20, just $1.67 a month. Visit CuriosityStream.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. It's Listeners on the Loose, brought to you by Spartan Plumbing. Listeners on the Loose, you pick the topic, you guide the show. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. Uh, somebody just texted in saying, so you guys went through Vicky's bag, and I do love one person said, Vicky has the clown car of purses, because things just keep coming out of it. Uh, but they want to know, what is the weirdest item in your wallet for the guys? Ooh. I don't have well, a, My wallet's not very impressive. <laughs> Neither is I mine, have been, actually. I've been downsizing on my wallet for yep. years, uh, but I, I will tell you what's in my wallet that is weird, but it's also a good luck charm. A condom. <laughs> that's not good. <laughs> I don't know why that's a good luck charm. Oh. And that's not weird. Everybody didn't everybody keep a, a condom in their wallet. That's, that's a, what I mean. Yeah, that's yeah. a bad idea. Back, back in the days of not getting laid, I did just so it looked like I was cool. Yeah, and you, is, is it a bad idea now? Why is that? Well, it's <laughs> not good to have it in your wallet because you sit on it. You you, you potentially could tamper with yeah. the the uh, effectiveness of the of the condom. Yeah, you're wearing it down. Oh, right. That's uh, why I just now wrap my rascal with money cuz you know, hard it is. Oh yeah. yeah. That's money. yeah. yeah that's that that bills. I have a I have a, a lucky <laughs> That's what my dad used to say whenever I'd leave my house, he go, "Don't forget to wrap that rascal." I'm like, "Dad, I'm just going to the grocery store. I don't know what you think I'm planning on doing there, but and also, do you not know me? I'm not getting laid, dad." Oh. <laughs> That's really just the uh, the equivalent of the talk. You know what I mean? That's the only talk that a dad will have with his kid. Just something right. like that. Don't forget to wrap that rascal. You're absolutely right. I don't remember him ever giving me the talk, mom or dad. I think I learned about sex from like Meatballs, Porkies, and, and those kind of movies. Solid, oh, solid, wonderful yeah. educational films. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> but my dad forever, anytime after around high school, he probably realized, like, okay, it's high school time. He might potentially be getting laid i'm pretty sure he's not but then he would do that <laughs> joke all the time leave the house make sure you wrap that rascal mm. like i'm going to church dad what the <laughs> hell are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm an altar boy for a wedding uh, <laughs> kind of well, it is a wedding yeah. lots of those you know sometimes those bridesmaids good point <laughs> yeah 206 421 well, rock texas at 77999 we haven't gone through the wallet yet um <laughs> oh that's right oh yeah sorry about that <laughs> it's okay uh danny got anything weird in your wallet no I, I was looking the weirdest thing i think i have is is a or a two dollar coupon for starbucks that's really it. Like I have a your wallet really. is gigantic. How do you not have stuff in it's there? It's all credit cards. I have credit cards. How many credit cards do you have? I have five credit cards. Why do you have five credit cards? I was a lot, a lot of debt when I was in my twenties. Yeah. All of them are zeroed out. Like I, they have zero balances. Nice. But I just have them because in case I need them. All of them? Yeah. You never know. I you need do a hot, know. You need, you need a you hot topic know. credit card. You always need a hot topic. Okay, okay, the hot topic one is necessary because I go yeah. there at least once a week. I yeah. give you a hard time. But I have, I think, like five different insurance cards because I keep forgetting which one's the current <laughs> one. So oh, I'm all in there. I just haven't gotten around to it. I'm like, oh, you got the dentist one. I got this one. Yeah. But other than that, I don't think I have anything. Spe- I have money. That's kind of weird. I don't have any <laughs> like money. actual cash yeah, money. Actual cash money. Wow. I have a gift card that has it was a hundred dollar gift card and has about dollar thirty five left on it and I won't throw it away. No, it's you never know if you're going to need a dollar. Yeah, it's a buck thirty five right there. Yeah, have, that's good money right there. Four, five um, medical cards <laughs> and my vision card. 
I, what am I doing? I gotta go do this. this is crap. Yeah. Do you even go get your eyes checked? No, I no, I need to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nothing special, man. But yeah. I, I'm, I'm gone with those days of the big clunky wallet. Like my now, my wallet just basically holds a couple of cards and then has like a, a cash clip, and that's it. It's for your yeah. front wallet because we got the phones now. So the phones are the new clunky thing in our pocket. Yeah. So we don't we don't need the wallet there. I I have a lucky five dollar bill that was like blessed by some fertility or not fertility but sort of um <laughs> what the what's the hell? word I'm trying to think of? It's not fertility, uh, wealth, a wealth thing or whatever. Somebody was trying uh, opulence, an opulence sort of type of expert or whatever. Like you know, you will have an opulent life, but do not ever let go of this five dollar bill. It must stay with you forever. I don't know any of that. Yeah, yeah. Never even so heard that's of that the, before. That's the weirdest thing in my wallet. I think it's some, some sort of Asian tradition where they I was given like great chi energy, so don't ever get rid of it. And then you'll. It's almost like an Irishman's lucky coin. You know what I mean? It's like don't ever get rid of it, yeah, and all your huh. luck will go out. So and it's a five dollar bill. So I have it, and I've had it for the longest time, and I and I keep it so that I'll never spend it. And uh, that's in my wallet. That'll be there for, I guess, until, you know, I'm no longer lucky, I have guess. You, have you ever come close to spending it? I did once, and that's when I was like, whoa. So I put it in a place now where I don't keep my money, uh, so that way I'll never spend it, but it's still there. That's interesting. It's like Scrooge McDuck's lucky dime. The yes. first dime he ever made. Yeah. I can't make fun of you because my mom gave me this, like, I, I forget what saint it is, but it's a medallion of a saint that you're supposed to keep by your wallet. It's like a saint of money. Yeah. Good luck. That's, yeah, that's, yeah, St. Scrooge McDuck. Yes, it is. <laughs> oh, There's dude, the, duck bill. the Catholic religion has so many saints that you're supposed to put everywhere, like medallions, to, to mm-hmm. make so that you're lucky in all things. Lucky in love, lucky in money, lucky in health. Uh, yeah, there's saints for everybody. Yeah. And Liz, oh, yeah, I, I recognize that saint. Yeah, I remember seeing that thing, too, yeah. Yeah. That's St. Money right there, St. Cash? St. Cash, Dollar cash money. St. <laughs> cash <laughs> money, Dollar, people. Dollar, Dollar, Dollar. Yeah. So really, I don't know. Is it weird? I mean, I guess. I mean, I don't know what the weird is. I mean. Yeah. It sounds like none of us have anything weird. Yeah. yeah. We're normal. Finally. Oh, yeah. we're not normal. Like, no. uh, hold yeah. back on that one right there. Yeah. So I said, hey, Steve, since you watched the Grammys, how do you feel about Eddie Van Halen getting 15 seconds? Uh, Neil Peart not getting anything, not even recognized. May he rest in peace. I think Neil was part of last year's, sadly. You know, I think it's. If I remember correctly, and I don't yeah, because Neil's been gone over a year, hasn't he? It was early of 2020, I think maybe January of 2020. So I believe he might have been mentioned. And I'm not sure. Don't quote me. Yeah. I don't really. Like, I fast that would make a lot sense. Of stuff in the Grammys, there's no way they would ignore him in the immemorium. Somebody would have put him in there. So it had to be last year's. The Van Halen one, Eddie one, like. I did. The, I was like, "Oh wow, they're doing all these great performances." I really liked how they did the immemorial. It wasn't just a bunch of names and like some music band in the background. Like every once in a while, they'd bust into that artist perform like uh, someone paying tribute, like Bruno Mars and Anderson Pack doing some Little Richard and Brandy Carlisle was a part of it, and uh, even uh, Lionel Richie is or, or Kenny Rogers. Lionel Richie did a Kenny Rogers song, sorry. Yeah. Uh, and, and they did a little bit of a nod to Eddie with his guitar and him playing in the background, a guitar solo for about 15 seconds. I thought it was short, and I would have loved to have seen somebody pay tribute by maybe like an all-star band playing his music and, and stuff like that. But then I saw Wolfgang saying, hey, he was asked to perform with at the Grammys and do uh, Wolfgang being uh, Eddie's son, and he said no, which I was like, oh, okay, well, maybe they did try and do something and yeah, maybe it wasn't enough in the eyes of us Van Halen fans, but it does sound like they did think of him in a way of like, hey, we'll hit up his son and pay tribute to him that way. It's too bad they didn't have another idea, but I'm glad they had an idea because yeah, because uh, Wolfie was like, yeah, they wanted me to play Eruption uh, as a tribute, and he declined. He said in his, on his on his Instagram post, he's like, I don't think anyone could have lived up to what my father did for music but himself. Uh, but he also said he was disappointed that he only got 15 seconds. And, uh, you know, I, th- I, you know, it's tough to ask the kid to do something. You know, it's still relatively fresh, plus to play his dad's music. I mean, it, it, maybe if this was a, a year later, but I, I, I think I, I wish they would have had an alternate plan because I bet mm-hmm. there would have been some other guitarists that would have been happy to do a, go up there and do a, mo- oh. a memorial thing like that. I'm sure they do. I mean, you could have an endless list of guitarists, like popular mainstream guitarists that probably would have loved to have been a part of that. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure even Bruno Mars would have probably been up for doing something. Yeah. Um, he added, quote, he said, what hurt the most was that uh, that Eddie wasn't even mentioned when they were talking about artists we lost in the beginning of the show. 
Uh, but then he says, at the same time, I don't think my dad would have cared about any of this. He said, quote, I know Pop would have probably just laugh it off and say, ah, who gives a crap? He was only about the music anyway. The rest didn't matter. Um, you know, I think, though, when you're, you're, you know, when you're a kid and your dad was as great at something like that, and then you go to see something that honors great musicians and to, and to not have it be what you'd hoped it would be, I can understand his disappointment. Uh, I, you know, I don't know. It's, it's Steve... It just feels like rock is just getting kicked in the D for the last five to ten years in the Grammys. It just seems like it is. I know there's other great music, and I don't think that we should ever, you know, to dismiss the other great genres of music. But it feels like rock is getting just kicked in the D. No, I definitely thought that watching the Grammys. I'm a fan of all styles of music. I just like good songs or songs that you know put me in a good mood or whatever it may be. Like I, I, I can enjoy. Like I enjoyed Haim, their performance. I thought was really fun. Uh, I discovered a brand new band, the Black. Pumas, I believe they're called. I didn't even know anything about them. They're an Austin-based, like, psychedelic uh, f- funk rock band. That was really cool. And Ooh, I, I that sounds good up. to me. Their, their, their record's phenomenal. A song called Colors that they did, which was really good. Uh, but, dude, it is glaringly obvious that there's just zero. It, it's almost like rock music doesn't even exist anymore for the Grammys. And it's just a weird thing to see, you know, because you're like, oh, it used to be when I was growing up. I mean, typically it was like Green Day. It was like the token rock band that they'd put on the Grammys or some kind of performance. You know what I mean? Like you'd have at least one or two rock bands still playing at the Grammys. And I looked forward to that amongst also seeing bands. Like, dude, I don't know anything about this rapper, The Baby, and his name alone made me not want to listen to him. But then he performed. I'm like, wow, that was a really good performance. Even my wife, who doesn't like rap at all, was like, that guy was really good. So I enjoy being exposed to artists i never heard of but it was it was still a bummer that like there's no rock music really being represented in in in, on the grammys at all and everyone notices it too i don't know if you guys saw the molly crew post they posted a picture of tommy lee and uh vince neal going up when they won a grammy back in the day and saying something to the effect of like back when rock used to be represented on the grammys what a cool time and they showed like gene simmons in the audience remember when like metallica performed yeah and it's like come on we could you could do something like that why i i'm trying to figure out why I, I'm tr- I'm trying. I, I mean, I I feel like we have new performers and we have great people and I and I'm and I, and I look at look. The only thing I can think of is is that okay? Is it popular? But then you, you think of a band like the Glorious Sons. Their music's catchy, so there's no reason why they couldn't get a little love or somebody give them something because they it's rock, but yet it's also something that can easily be popular and something that you would love to sing along to. And I just don't understand it. What's wrong with our genre that it's just not getting treated? well anymore and they, uh, they'll put on performances from artists that are up and coming in the in the world of r&b and hip-hop so it's not like as if they're like only going with these massive huge bands so it is weird that they don't give some kind of a nod i did love that chris jericho he put up a tweet that said hey recording academy no tribute to eddie van halen tonight you and your bs awards can go blank your a <laughs> oh whoa, whoa. And, then he goes, and don't ever try and give my band a nomination i'd rather win a razzie award f off grammys and i just love like which is a funny tweet and then all the people on twitter are like do you agree with your sentiment but let's not let's not kid ourselves so fozzy's not getting a grammy nomination so then people are, are like we agree with you but you're not getting a grammy nomination. so like yeah, oh man yeah well he did kind of go a little far on that he probably should have left my band whole statement out of there he, it was funny yeah, though i thought yeah. that was a good, it's like oh it kind of yeah, backfired yeah. but i don't Whoops. disagree i mean it, it is what it is Stupid yeah, Grammys. I, I just I would like to know why. I mean, I you know my brain doesn't is it's like is there a is there something else at play? I don't know that because it makes no sense to me when you want to highlight all kinds of music and yeah, like you said, it's great to see all the genres and yet rock seems to be suspiciously missing. I did finally watch the uh, WAP performance in the Megan Stallion Cardi oh, yeah. performance. Wow, <laughs> it is fun. Yeah, <laughs> so, oh, I yeah. mean you don't even. I, is if you're a fan of booty shaking, you need to go back and watch it. There's some prime booty shaking. Well, that's there probably really the problem. Is. Maybe that's why there's just not enough booty shaking in rock. Okay. Then my wife I, jokingly looks and goes, "How would you feel if Tatum had a song like that and performed like that?" And I'm like, "We do not need to have this conversation." Yeah, yet. right. <laughs> that's a setup. Oh no, she's not throwing that in your face already. No, just in a fun way. We're just oh, laughing about it. I'm like, well, yeah, she's, she's going to learn how to play the tambourine, not dance. Yeah. I know. I mean, look, and people used to, we'd always say that when Sarah was younger. And I'm like, look, you know, and, and Sarah had started doing a lot of different dance moves and hip hop performances. And, you know, some of the, 
other people would be digging it because obviously she's a young woman doing what she's doing. But I have some of the parents look at me and go, wow, you're really happy about that? I'm like, well, what do you, what, she, look, she's performing. What do you want? She's a good yeah. kid. Shut up. That was just a fun joke. I was, yeah. I was laughing about it. I mean, but it is a thing you have to face, though, Steve. At some point, if your daughter decides to do anything at all that displays anything that some people might go, whoa, um, you know, when it's like, hey, you know, I mean, yeah, what no father wants to have to watch those things or like, you know, like a father that has to watch his kid act in a real thing like that. Yeah. So, well, it is uh, it is time, though, to answer a big question. Here we go. What do Ryan Castle and Twitter have in common? I'll tell you at 951 on The Rock. BJ and Migs mornings on The Rock at 99.9 KISW. And now, the Ryan Castle question of the day. What do Ryan Castle and Twitter have in common? Incredibly short attention span. Yeah. I mean, really. What'd you say? What were we talking about again, Ryan? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Something. Someone said Steve has done both on the toilet. So his wife gets <laughs> mad when he's on both all the time. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oh, uh, Steve is a verified member of both. That's right. Oh, he's a very. I didn't realize he was a member of Ryan Castle. Wow. Danny enjoyed that toilet joke a bit too much, I think. <laughs> yeah, right it just took that. a second for it to sink in. As it were. Uh, um, <laughs> this was interesting, man. Uh, Sunday, a bunch of people randomly got banned from Twitter for 12 hours for using the word Memphis, like in Memphis, Tennessee. And people are like, what? And Twitter's like, yeah, sorry, that was a bug. Our system had a bug. We we no Memphis is cool. We're and so Twitter finally said they fixed it. Said you can say Memphis again, but unfortunately that did that fix didn't work for everybody. Some people were still banned for these Memphis tweets, and they couldn't get back on Twitter until they actually deleted all of their Memphis tweets. Twelve hours they had to wait to get back on. So like wow. every news organization in Memphis was off Twitter then, right? Yeah, exactly. I would. There's no way you uh, join us in news. Wait, you, wait where, where we go? Right. Memphis Four, you're out of here. You're done. Ryan Castle, he's not out of here. He's got a 12-pack, and he's in here. BJ and Miggs, play of the day. You're looking at this guy right here. Miserable human being, but I got the job done. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Is that what you tell your wife? That's his his Tinder bio. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. Thanks, Victoria. Come on, I was actually awake and said something. (laughs) By the way, that should be on Vicky's Tinder bio. I was actually actually awake and said something. (laughs) There's never been truer bios than that. It's very true. BJ and Migs, mornings on The Rock, 99.9 KISW. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. Here's another question from a listener. Can I leave things off of a bankruptcy, like my car? You have to list all of your assets and creditors when you file bankruptcy. So by, you would have to tell the, the court and the trustee that you have the car or that you have a car loan. Uh, you could say that I want to keep my car and continue to make my payments on the car. Uh, but the, the court will need to know that you have a car and, and that may, you may have a payment on the car. So by leaving it off the bankruptcy, if you mean that you cannot disclose it to the court, the answer to that is no, you must disclose it. However, that does not mean that you'll lose those assets. You'll be able to keep things like a car and a house in almost all cases, but you must disclose them to the court. Um, but you'll need to continue to make payments on a house or a car that you intend to keep. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. Thanks for listening.